so you can understand me. Okay. So welcome to my talk about the status of the HFP quadruple pool resonator. So what I will what we want to do um, is the RF characterization of superconducting thin films. So on the way towards uh, uh, CW operation of high current accelerators or turnkey systems, we need a detailed understanding of cavity loss mechanisms. And so our aim is to measure the surface resistance with a very good resolution in the, the sub nano ohms regime. And the parameters important here are the frequency inside of the cavity, the field length where we want to measure, measure, and the temperature at which we measure the device. And there, just uh, as um, Paul, uh, I can present an ideal tool to do this. Um, with the quadruple resonator, we have a wide phase space available of frequencies, temperature, and field length. And uh, these measurements can be done with sub nano ohm resolution, so which corresponds to the high Q of about 10 to the 11. And therefore, we are commissioning a uh, QPR HZB, which is an optimized version of the already existing and very successful system at CERN. So, um, the original design comes from CERN and has then been adapted to the HZB design. Okay, I start a bit about what, what we have. Um, so you see in, in red uh, a screening cavity out of niobium and here in this uh, cut two quadruple rods connected with this uh, pole shoe and this is a cut so we have four quadruple rods. These work as a transmission line and generate a quadruple mode inside of this cavity. Um, the whole system is put into a liquid helium bath cryostat and also liquid helium is filled inside of these uh, rods. So these niobium rods are also cooled with liquid helium. And then the field is concentrated on this sample here shown as yellow disk. So if we do a zoom into that region, we have the disk sitting here and with a small gap of around half a millimeter above these pole shoes from the quadruple rods and they focus the magnetic field on the sample with a very low electric field here. <laughs> this sample sits on top of a calorimetry chamber and is thermally isolated, thermally isolated from the cavity. So the cavity operates at 1.8 Kelvin, but the sample does not necessarily need this temperature. And we have um, a heater and sensors mounted on the bottom side of the a sample to, to monitor this and to measure. And also the uh, where this um, gap here, so in the coaxial structure, the sample um, is, is somehow decoupled <coughs> from the resonator or from the field. So um, what are the optimization criteria? What did we have to do? So um, the phase space has to be maximized in frequency, field length, and temperature, and we want to obtain a high resolution. And therefore, the uh, measurements of the, uh, the dimensions of the quadruple rods have been changed. The, the thickness of the rods here and of the pole shoes, the distance between the pole shoes and the sample here has been varied. And the frequencies have been adapted just by shortening the rods. So we have a base frequency of 433 megahertz and can go up to 1.3 gigahertz, which is this commonly used Tesla frequency. And um, the focusing of the magnetic fields onto the sample has been increased. So by a factor of two around. And also um, these uh, sample fields, we get at a lower electric field fields and so this um, operating range has been increased. And therefore, um, the, the radius of the rods have been significantly increased from 8 to 30 millimeters. And this also leads to better cooling of these rods. So and how do we measure? We do not use an RF measurement to, to measure the, the surface resistance. We do this via a calorimetric measurement. And this leads to this sub-nano-ohm resolution. It works in the way that we can heat up 
the sample to a temperature of interest with this heater put on the bottom side of the sample. And then in, when we switch on the RF, the heater is regulated in that way that the temperature of, of interest on the sample is all constant. So we have a thermal equilibrium here. And the, the difference between, between these two powers on the DC heater adjusts the dissipated RF power on the sample. And then we can convert this by the geometrical factor of the sample, which is known from simulations, directly to the surface resistance, which is then just proportional to the difference of these two power measurements on, this, on the heater. We have the frequency. We know the geometry factor from simulations. But we also need the um, stored energy in that of the cavity. I will come to this later. So the resonator for HLB is in production, or production is already finished. And then uh, it was shipped to JLab for surface treatment. We already got the standard cap cavity procedure with the BCP, ultrasonic rinsing, and a bake out. So um, you see here a, a picture as from the sample on these uh, pole shoes, and there are the quadruple rods and the top side there. And first RF measurements have been done at uh, JLab just some time ago. And we wanted to measure the stored energy inside of the cavity via an emitted power measurement. So this is done in that way. We have a strongly coupled antenna as a fundamental power coupler with a beta of around 160 because of expected microphonics. And so we broaden the resonance peak and um, life's easier for our RF system. Then, we have in red shown here the uh, transmit uh, the forward power of the RS system, and this is a step function. And we switch off the power, the stored energy from inside of the cavity comes out through the input coupler, and we see this exponential decay here uh, shown in the reflected power, and then the blue curve, and uh, which fast with the fast power meter we can integrate this peak on this pulse. Uh, the uh, decay time is um, related to the external uh, quality factor of the 2.5 milliseconds. And then we just have to evaluate this integral to get the, uh, the stored energy. And uh, from simulations, we then can convert the stored energy into the magnetic field on the sample uh, which is then shown here as a function of forward power. And we are very happy with this because at around 15 watts of forward power, we achieved around 125 millitesla on the sample as peak field. Then we are limited by quench. The maximum magnetic field we have on Niobium is 145 millitesla on the rods. At the moment, we cannot say which where the quench was located, so if it was on the rods or if it was on the sample. If it's on the sample, then there would be some uh, yeah, some potential to increase this curve here, so we will see this in later tests. But this is a significant improvement to the baseline design where measurements can be done up to around 60 millitesters and, when, and we think to, to be able to measure up to 125 or more. This is the first part, and the, the second part, which also, also changed, is the, the calorimetry chamber. So we wanted to have a demountable sample, that it's not required to have electron beam welding on the top of the sample. So this is the sample here, and um, it's rather flat with 12 millimeter side. Then, um, via screen connection, this can be mounted onto this uh, cylinder and again mounted to the flange at the bottom of the resonator. So we don't re uh, require welding and possibly uh, a heat, uh, heat adjustment is possible. If we have different flanges available and we vary this distance, then we can vary the, the distance between the sample and the, the rods, which is very sensitive. The risks uh, is clear is because in the baseline design, the vacua are separated, the calorimetry vac vacuum and the vacuum inside of the cavity. Now, with this demountable design, we are not really sure that these vacua are still 
unconnected. So we, we have to investigate that. And the impact on the on the RF system of this um, edge here. We have done simulations on that. So here we have the sample, then a five meters high height of the sample, and then a gap of around one, uh, 0 0.5 millimeters, and here this, the cylinder going down. And here on this picture, and then you see, see the magnetic field is color plot. So these pole shoes focus on the magnetic field right on the sample, and then with a different color scale, you see uh, the magnetic, magnetic fields on the uh, cylinder. And the problems are the surface currents on the New York. So there are points where the surface currents are going straight across this gap, and then we cannot allow this design with, with these structures here, with, which would, would be at the connecting um, point of sample and the cylinder. So we inserted the indium wire gasket and said, OK, we only have separated gaps at this critical position but not this uh, circumferential gap. And here, now several millimeters are acceptable for our design, and also this indium will improve the vacuum uh, issues and work as a vacuum gasket between the uh, uh, and the insulation vacuum inside and the uh, cavity vacuum outside. Um, the current status of our project is that, that the uh, RF system is ready. The measurements at JLAB were very successful, and at the moment, the um, <coughs> QPR is currently being shipped to the HFB to Berlin. The data acquisition is set up, so the hardware is ready, and the setup is a, and the software is in a good state. As you see here, the installation work is not right finished. This picture is just from the uh, last two days, but um, will be finished soon, and this new sample holder is also in production and will be hopefully uh, ready in the next time. The indium seal has been tested with an aluminium prototype quite successfully. We want to repeat these indium tests with the real uh, niobium calorimetric chamber because of different thermal um, uh, properties of these uh, two materials, so this can be an issue later on. Um, the QPR will be installed in October and then we'll do first measurements again with the same sample as at the JLAB with this, uh, just an uncoated niobium cylinder with a high triple R. Then we hope to uh, get a better uh, understanding of unexpected microphonics from the first measurement. The new sample holder will also hopefully arrive next week that we can do tests with this. So on the vacuum uh, things. And we have a project, or we are planning a project um, together with the uh, University of Siegen and our French partners in Saclay and Orsay to have this um, RNA uh, DFG project, which is at the moment waiting for approval, where we want to do um, systematic studies of niobium 3 tin. So we do the coating, the surface state is characterized, and the DC parameters. And at HCB, we want to characterize with these quadruple resonator the RF properties to get an understanding of this material and possibly other materials. But we are also always looking for collaboration partners who are able to make films. And so we can ship these disks of samples around with a diameter of 75 millimeters and this 12 millimeters height, which then could be coated and tested inside of this system. Thank you for your attention. Uh, just a very small uh, correction. The welding is on the side of the sample uh, in the CERN version, not, not on top of it. Uh, but my question uh, is actually the quench field you measured was in CW or um, pulse? Um, I mean, you're showing a pulse, but. Yeah. yeah. So the, the time scale are uh, 60 milliseconds. Pulse pulse. This is the pulse mode, yes. What's the temperature? 
Uh, this measurement, I think, has been done at 1.8 Kelvin. Okay. Yeah, let's set speaker again. <laughs>